Now let's go back to the uh, curve, and again we use a straight line for uh, simplicity. Let's assume that the individual chooses combination A on this graph. That is, the individual learns B2 of organizational behavior and E2 of economics, given the technology that's available in the classroom. Now suppose that the individual professor in economics decides to introduce uh, some technological uh, improvement. That is, uh, by having this technology available to the students, the production possibility curve moves, in, moves out as I have described it here. Why does it move out? Well, with the technological improvement, the individual who spends all of his time in the study of economics can move to uh, E3 and learn zero organizational behavior. Then, since there's nothing that's been done in the organizational behavior class, the individual stays at B1, the curve has to move uh, between uh, B1 and E3. Well, the individual with this greater uh, choice set, the individual can move from combination A to combination uh, B, uh, in which case the individual would learn more economics, and this would be what you might expect. If there's a technological improvement uh, in the economics class, you might expect students in that class uh, to learn more. And if, in fact, students move from A to B, and if, in fact, uh, the dean, the manager, uh, decides to reward professors on how much uh, their students learn, then the economics uh, professor would be rewarded for the technological uh, improvement. But note that the student can also move from combination A to combination C, in which case the individual continues to learn E2 of economics and B3 of organizational uh, behavior. That is, because of the technological improvement in the economics class, students are quite capable of learning uh, more organizational behavior. Why is this? Well, because people are better, the students are better able to learn economics, uh, can learn more economics in a given amount of time, then the student can reduce the amount of time spent on economics and go back to the old achievement level and apply the extra time uh, to behavior. Notice the management problem uh, here, and that is if the dean uh, decides to reward professors solely a, based on, on, um, on the, the performance of their students, then the dean can be rewarding the, um, uh, the professor in, in OB. Uh, the economics professor is the one who makes the innovation. The OB professor uh, gets the, um, uh, gets the uh, reward. Uh, the moral of the story is uh, that when, in fact, there is an efficiency improvement in, in one area, for example, the classroom in economics, uh, that efficiency improvement can show up in, in other areas. Or for that matter, the efficiency improvement can, be, can show up in both areas because the individual could move to a point uh, like D, in which case the individual learns more economics and more uh, organizational uh, behavior. Uh, the point here is that too often um, uh, researchers in education have uh, considered the impact of, of an innovation such as more degrees for, for teachers or uh, better textbooks or program study guides or uh, computers in the classrooms and they've, they've tried to assess the impact of those innovations in the class where they have been introduced. And quite often educators have uh, mistakenly concluded that those innovations have had no impact on the learning in that classroom whereas in fact they may very well have had considerable, uh, a considerable impact, but the efficiency improvement was uh, transferred to some other uh, course, or for that matter, because students can learn more of one course, economics, uh, they decide to um, uh, use the extra time at their disposal uh, to improve their game of uh, golf. Uh, thank you very much.